everyone and welcome to another review from Colour with Claire. Today we're looking at the new book from Masha Vandenberg. It's called Masha's Fairy Tales and it's her depiction of several different traditional fairy tales in her kind of style and design. So it's, it's really exciting because it's something that Masha's not really ever done before. It's usually her own illustrations, um, not taken from any other inspiration if that makes sense um any existing inspiration so it's really great to have fairy tales that we all know and love um sort of redesigned in masha's style so this is the front of the book um as you can see it's quite a long book i can't even get the whole thing on the the video screen and i'll just measure it for you now so we can see what we're what size it is i should have done this before always forget that's six, 12, just over 12 inches, maybe 12 and a half inches by, let's say, about nine and a half inches. <laughs> so it is quite a long book, you know, to, compared to standard colouring books. Um, yeah, so you, you get in um, sort of a large scale book with this. So that's the cover. And then we've got the back. And as usual, we've got um, a bit from Masha, both in English and in her native language. And it says, all my life I've been walking through the enchanted world of fairy tales. Creating a colouring book inspired by the bedtime stories of my childhood is a dream come true. It's been wonderful to create a new world with my illustrations, a world full of magic, love, hope, and of course, a little bit of danger. Welcome to my fairy tale world and dream away. And then you can see here, we've got a list of all of the fairy tales that are included in the book, such as Little Red Riding Hood, Sleeping Beauty, uh, Snow Queen, The Wild Swans, the wolf and the seven little goats so some of these i haven't heard of or unless they're a sort of a, a cultural take on fairy tales that we all know so it could be from sort of the, her native country that we've got you know these these fairy tales here that we haven't heard of before i don't know but there are some more traditional ones rapunzel the frog prince the ugly duckling uh, and of course snow white so let's have a look through so you open it up and the first thing you can tell about the book when you handle it is that the paper is super, super thick. Um, it's actually 250 GSM, so it's very, very thick, very sturdy. It's, it's, it's basically a cardstock rather than a paper. So this is what we've got as we open up. This is the title page and then we've got the first illustration, which as you can see is the Little Red Riding Hood. We've got the wolf and it's kind of enclosed in this frame, which is showing us kind of a night sky I mean I suppose you could make it into a daytime with the sun but I've got a feeling this will look great as a nighttime scene and yeah it's really great it's it, everything is all in Masha's style obviously so if you've already got some of her books you will appreciate her kind of style and design so here obviously is the evil queen from Snow White holding her poison apple and this is clearly one that I've already coloured hopefully you can see it all on the screen and I'll just give it a little bit of a, a little bit of movement so that you can see all of the metallic paints that I've used on this the paints that I used were KJ designs by Karen paints on Etsy which I'll link below her shop is currently sort of open and then closed for a little while she opens for a very limited amount of time every week as uh, she's always inundated with orders for these paints so I'll leave the link in the description below and if the shop isn't currently open just keep your eye out on it and it will open um, soon so for the background I used some black acrylic paint and a Posca pen and the rest of it was done in pencil um, Prismacolor pencils so yeah I'm really really pleased with how this has turned out I wanted to go with um, colours that sort of made me feel like power and jealousy and um, a little bit of a villain kind of colour. <laughs> I don't know. It makes sense to me. So I went with purple and red and obviously the gold for the opulence. Um, and that in the background, again, the paints have made it look like a mirror because, of course, she asked the mirror who is the fairest of them all. So, yeah, I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. The cardstock took everything I threw at it really, really well. Multiple layers of paint, plenty of water, uh, more heavy acrylic paint obviously used on the background. And as you can see on the back, there's absolutely no bleed through or shadow whatsoever. All we've got is a little bit of printing from this illustration that's gone on to the back but yeah nothing nothing can phase this paper put it that way 
So this one is Sleeping Beauty. As you can see, we've got the prince with his shield and his sword on his horse, sort of hacking through all of this undergrowth to go and wake up Sleeping Beauty. So um, yeah, beautiful. Again, lots and lots of florals on this one. So, you know, we're used to this with Masha. She loves her florals and that kind of nature inspired kind of thing. So yeah, just beautiful. This one here is obviously the Little Mermaid. So we've got a couple of fish trailing around. But other than that, it is really quite a simplistic page. So this might be one for you to start off with if you're a little bit worried about getting into more intricate detail. And also if you wanted to try and create an underwater look with some washed, um, watered down white acrylic paint, things like that. So I'm not recognising what this one is straight away. So let's just check the back. So it's actually called Princess Donkey Skin, <laughs> which uh, may be a Dutch fairy tale. I don't know. Like I said, it could be something that is more prevalent um, in different countries and their sort of their own their own cultural um, fairy tales and stories and legends and things like that. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, it's a beautiful illustration. You can see that she's got the, the donkey over the like draped over her head i'd be really interested to know what that story in involves actually i'd like to listen to that um but again with the nice floral frame around there to um keep the work contained so we've got here what looks to be a four-headed dragon so let me just check what that is yeah it literally is a four-headed dragon <laughs> so it's on a mountain top again quite a simple illustration even though there are four dragon heads that you would have to color there's not a lot of intricacy. It's not very detailed. So again, something for you to practice, maybe your larger blending areas and um, things like that. So this one, let me just check. It looks like an ice queen. Uh, it's called the Snow Queen. Now, bearing in mind, I'm not brilliant at fairy tales and, and things like that. So it could be that I am sort of missing out on, uh, you know, a very, very well-known fairy tale here. But this one has a lot of detail by comparison to the previous illustrations especially as you can see on this cape that she's wearing here so lots of um lots of little spaces for your fine liners your really really sharp pencils and things like that and then you've got these cluster crystals at the bottom which i've done um i did a video on coloring cluster crystals with dough and ink tents and they're all multicolored, really bright and vibrant so you might want to take a look at that video for a bit of inspiration on how to color these crystals this is obviously the illustration that is the cover of the book. I'll just show you in colour. There we go. And it's clearly Rapunzel letting down her hair from the tower. What I really like about this one is it has a bit of an art deco style to it. This looks like some sort of stained glass or very intricate panelling. And I just really like... I just really like the whole look of the, the composition of the illustration. She's sat centre stage in the middle of the window and it's just a great a great illustration for you to practice your fabrics on, your hair. And again, this beautiful, I think this is, might be my favourite thing actually, this, back, this backdrop here, this panelling and this pattern. I can see a lot of different colours and colour schemes being used on that. Maybe even a, a stained glass type thing. So this I'm guessing is the frog prince because we've got a frog coming up from the pond with his little crown on. This looks to me to be like a pearl or something or it could even be, well it can't be a giant raindrop can it if we look at the perspective. But um, as a, again I'm not very familiar with this one but yeah another underwater sort of scene that you can practice those skills on. So this must be the swan princess, let's just check. So it's called the Wild Swans. Again, not something I'm familiar with. It looks to me like we've got a, it could either be a pond or a planet, or it could be anything, couldn't it? That circular backdrop that we've got there. And then you've of course got the beautiful swans with their crowns on and the girl dancing in the middle. So is it kind of like Swan Lake, that kind of ballet thing? She's on her tiptoe, so I'm guessing. So this here is, oh, so we've got a wolf and a deer and a grandfather clock. Nope, still not getting it. Let's have a look. This is called the wolf and the seven little goats. This is a goat, not a deer. <laughs> um, I could be forgiven for thinking that though, couldn't I really? Uh, again, not one I've heard of, but great illustration, beautifully designed grandfather clock, very opulent, very detailed. And you've got the prowling fox there in the background. Another thing I should mention about this book before I forget, is not only does it have 
amazing cardstock paper which has a slight tooth to it it's actually perfect uh, this paper is perfect um, it is also perforated on every page so you can tear them out and frame them very very cleanly and easily if you wanted to so we've got a, a lady here hanging over a balcony doing what looks like um, shaking out a big quilt that's got all of these feathers coming out of it let's see this is called old mother frost so again never heard of it but you know it's making me intrigued to go on google and find out about these different legends and stories um, but yeah really nice illustration uh, i love the detail on the balcony the feathers everywhere it's got a lot of movement uh, there's a lot of fun in that illustration so this is the ugly duckling that of course turns into the beautiful swan You've got that reflection there of how he looks and how he becomes so it's nice it's a nice little um a nice little take on that story and i love the floral frame around this one as well again not too difficult not too intricate um but it's going to be a really nice sort of um striking piece when it's done i think so let me just check what this one is because as far as i can see it's the bird sat on some flowers um it's the Chinese Nightingale. Okay, so now that it's mentioned, I do see a bit of an Asian influence on here. Again, with the beautiful patterning of the frame, almost like stained glass or, you know, some sort of wooden partition. You know those, um, those, those concertina folding panels that you put in front of where you're getting changed or dressed? Something like that, it reminds me of that. And then you've got the beautiful flowers and the really decor decoratively styled nightingale. <laughs> that was a bit difficult to get out. Okay, this one, again, I'm gonna have to have a look. The last one, it's called the evil fairy. I suppose this could be from any fairy tale. There's always some sort of villain and evil, evil creature in there somewhere, but um, not exactly sure where it comes from. But again, nice close up of the face. You've got a lot of skin coloring you can practice on here. I love how the hair is just piled on top of the head and just sitting there. There's, you know, a lot of the times in colouring books when it's people and girls, you will see that they've got all these flowing, beautiful locks that's just like, just really not um, realistic. But this girl looks like she's just trying to do some sort of scrape your hair back bun to do the do the laundry and do the, uh, the vacuuming. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know why I went off on that tangent. But again, gorgeous wings, um, big spaces for you to colour. I would personally paint these wings with a really sparkly paint so that they'd shimmer. I've got some holographic paint, again from KJ Design by Karen, uh, holographic paint that would look fantastic in those wings. So there you go, that's the end of the book. Uh, this is for sale on Masha's Etsy page at the moment. I'm going to leave a link in the description for you to go ahead and buy your own copy if you wish to. But I've also got a giveaway for you. It's a big giveaway as well. There's five copies that Masha has very, very generously donated for my giveaway. And it is worldwide. So anybody can enter. Uh, if you live on planet Earth, you can enter and get yourself a copy. So five different people will win a copy each. Um, what you need to do to enter the giveaway is to leave a comment on this video. So leave a comment below just saying what your favourite fairy tale is and also a little emoji flag of your country so we can see where you're all from. So if I was commenting below, I'd put Snow White and then I'd put the UK flag in emoji next to it. So there you go, that's how to enter. I'm gonna draw it in seven days and I'll announce the winner on my socials, so keep an eye out. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you soon on Colour with Claire.